Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. It has been a very wet day here and in the last days we've been talking about wind, but let's today address precipitation. So I'm going to use a grip file from a meteorological model. Maybe you can find one from your own Met Office, but this uh, file has uh, all kinds of meteorological variables, including precipitation and temperature. And uh, today we're going to see in QGIS how to uh, visualize this using an animation with a temporal controller and how to extract data for a specific point and create graphs. We also learn how to uh, calculate uh, the total precipitation for uh, uh, the locations in the grip file. After downloading, I can use the browser panel to drag the mesh format to the map canvas in QGIS, where it uh, selects already a variable to visualize. I want to change the projection of the project to the Dutch projection and I use OpenStreetMap as a background layer. Make sure that the mesh is on top. And I'm going to open uh, the properties, the layer properties to see what variables are in there and see if the time is set because it's a temporal mesh. Now let's open the layer styling panel which adapts to the mesh layer and I'm going to choose here the total precipitation. You can see that the units are in kilograms per square meter, but that's equivalent to a, a millimeter. And I go to the tab for the contours and there I can change the color ramp that is used for the visualization. So you could choose blues, which always goes nice for uh, precipitation data, uh, but make sure that for the value of zero, you choose a 0% opacity so that the dry pixels are transparent while the others uh, are having an intensity color of blue. You can switch on the temporal controller, where we can see that we have here data from 21st of February, 6 o'clock to 23rd of February, 6 o'clock. And when I press the play button, it starts to animate. In another video, you've learned how to export this to uh, an animation, an animated GIF. Here we will not do that. I'm going to edit the legend to have less uh, decimals and I'm going to add the suffix millimeters not to get confused. You could also use blending mode multiply to also make the pixels with the color transparent, but it will change a little bit the, the colors. You can also choose another color ramp from the CPT City catalog, for example. Go to create new color wrap, choose CPT City, and there you see precipitation. And you can choose one of these ramps that are made for you. Click OK. And let's see how that looks like. Remember that we still have our blending on. This also looks nice. We can also do calculations with mesh layers. So I go to the mesh calculator, which works in a similar way as the raster calculator, but there are a few different functions and different ways it works. So I can calculate statistics from the mesh, like calculating the sum. So if I want to know the sum of the precipitation for a time period, I choose this uh, sum function. I create an on the fly dataset group. These dataset groups go into um, the mesh layer that we have it will be added to it as an extra variable, uh, but it will not be saved inside the layer. It will be temporary. And here I can uh, change the date range. So let's take just 24 hours. So from 6 o'clock on the 21st to 6 o'clock on the 22nd. And I could also use a mask layer for the spatial extent, but here I just keep uh, the extent that we have here. And here we see that the result is added and I can visualize it by clicking on the contour. Of course, it makes more sense to also change this to uh, blues. And there we see that um, how the distribution of the total precipitation is in the Netherlands for these 24 hours. Now there are some nice tools in QGIS to extract values from a point. So if we want to know for a specific location, the trends in temperature and precipitation, for example, we can place a point here on the map. So I just create a temporary scratch layer. With location, choose point. 
Let's change it also to the projection of this project. And I just add a point here. Toggle off the editing. And then in the processing toolbox, under the mesh group, you will find a lot of nice tools. And one of them is to export time series values from points of a mesh dataset. So we choose our mesh dataset. Here under dataset groups, you can choose select in available dataset groups. And there you can choose uh, the variables that you want to um, extract. So let's use total precipitation and temperature. Here you can also modify the time extent. So I want it uh, for the same uh, 24 hours. So from six to six. And you can also uh, modify the time step, but we uh, keep it here as is default in the mesh, which is an hour. And you can change the digits for the output coordinates and dataset values. We keep the defaults here. And let's save it as uh, P and T. Run it, it's pretty fast. And then if I refresh the browser, I find the CSV file, which I can add to the layers panel. And if I open the attribute table, I see here the values for precipitation and temperature with the timestamp and the latitude longitude coordinates. Of course, you can uh, visualize that in a spreadsheet program or with other tools, but here we're going to use the data plotly plugin. After installing the data plotly plugin, you can find this button to open the panel. Make it a bit wider. Change the layer to our CSV file. And I want to first do the rainfall as a bar plot. Change the X field to time and the Y field to total precipitation. I don't want uh, to use the legend title later, so I'll just keep it. And those colors are okay for precipitation. I uncheck the button here to show the legend. And I give the plot a title, precipitation, change those labels, let's use a capital T for time, change the units for precipitation to millimeters, and use a capital P. And that looks okay, so let's create the plot. So here it will create the plot in this uh, panel, so if you want it uh, wider you can uh, change uh, the width of the panel. And you can always export this to a PNG. Now let's do the temperature, choose a scatter plot, same table, but I change the Y field to temperature, change the colors, let's use red, and use points and lines, keep the rest as is, change the title to temperature, And uh, make clear that's degrees Celsius. And let's clean the plot canvas, otherwise it will be combined with the previous plot. And when we create the plot here, we have the temperature trend for these uh, days and time, which you can also export to an image. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel and uh, looking forward to see you again.